Meghan and Harry's friend Brian E. Gordon said prioritize family is fantastic. Journalist Brian E. Gordon shares why she thinks Meghan and Harry were brilliant to step back from their roles as royals. When Meghan and Prince Harry announced their decision to step back as senior royals, many were in uproar, but journalist and friend of the couple Brian E. Gordon was not among them. I've spoken to Meghan and Harry a lot about mental health, and what they've done in prioritizing their family is fantastic. Brian E. told for our mental health digital issue, guest edited by Scarlett Moffat. I think that anything you put before your mental health you're going to lose anyway, Brian E. continued. I feel Meghan and Harry have become figures for everyone to put their frustrations on. But I think what they do is brilliant, and I find it mystifying when people have a different opinion on it. Bryony has long had a relationship with Prince Harry, strengthening their bond. When he spoke openly about his mental health on a Mad World podcast in 2017. I will always have a place in my heart for Harry, it's five years since he did a podcast and I was honored he chose to do it with Mad Old Me. The Sussex's decision to step back from their senior royal roles, and also focus on their mental health, is a move anyone who has ever struggled with mental illness in the workplace will be able to relate to. In fact, Bryony struggled with her own mental health at work, thanks to Puro, the form of OCD she has, which means she faces persistent and disturbing intrusive thoughts. I describe OCD as your brain refusing to acknowledge what your eyes can see, Bryony says. When you're mentally ill it impacts absolutely everything. And, my OCD meant, I would be really worried I had sent an abusive email to someone and deleted it. Bryony believes that the pandemic and working from home has exacerbated mental health issues in the workplace. So many people have been working at home and I've found since working from home, I've become more paranoid about work. When you're with your colleagues, you pick up their cues and you know what's going on. If they are quiet, you know it's nothing to do with you, but when you're sitting at home in your bedroom you think. They haven't got in touch with me because they hate me and I'm going to be fired. While it's comforting to stay in the safety of our own homes and not confront the work-related things that make us feel anxious. When we force ourselves to do the little things we don't want to do relating to work, be it meeting a new contact, answering the phone, or sending a stressful email, we feel so much better for it, Bryony adds. All of those daily challenges are really good for us in the long term. My brain will tell me I can't do anything, it'll say you can't go to work, you can't go for a run. You can't get showered, right from the moment I wake up, so the more I'm able to challenge it, the less power I give it. The inside of our heads have been given a lot more power over the last two years, Bryony continues. Bryony shares that her relationship with her mental health and the workplace shifted when she was open about it that just changed everything, she said. Talk to someone you trust, advises Bryony. There will be someone. It doesn't have to be a line manager, it could be a friend and remember you are legally protected. No matter how bad someone might make you feel, you have legal support if you're experiencing a mental health issue. Remember, sometimes we need to take time to look after ourselves, you can't pour from an empty cup, she adds. Sometimes I suffer from the delusion that I can't take time off because there's so much to be done and then I just crash and I'm forced to take time off. Bryony points out that work can be a good distraction if you're in a bad place mentally, but that we need to be careful not to become too reliant on it. Work can give you confidence and focus and help take your mind off things. But it's about that balance so you don't become reliant on it to stop you thinking about what's going on. On Monday Harry also appeared on Maury Television in New Zealand to reveal the serious meaning behind the comedy sketch. Speaking to the cameras he announced the launch of a travelist trip rating initiative. That he hopes will encourage Kiwi travelers to put sustainability at the heart of their holidays. This features a simple quiz based on the Maori concept of shaiki. Which is a commitment to care for local people, their environment, and their culture wherever you travel. As travel continues to come back. We have an opportunity and a need to redefine the industry for better, for good. Harry says in a statement posted on the Travelist website. In a world where we are tasked with rating so many things, we are now asking. What if your destination rated you? Starting in beautiful Aotearoa New Zealand, we are launching our first campaign. There is a well-known Maori proverb, Ere taku toe a ti toe te kitahi, engari hi toe te kitini. 
Success is not the work of an individual, but the work of many. We invite you to be a part of our many. Harry will be undertaking some important travelling himself next month, when he heads to the UK. For Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee celebrations with Meghan, Lily, and son Archie. The trip will be the first time Lily, who was born in California last year, will visit her dad's homeland. She'll likely even celebrate her first birthday on the 4th of June during the trip. Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are excited and honoured to attend the Queen's Platinum Jubilee celebrations this June with their children, a spokesperson for the couple told after the visit was announced. Thank you for watching. If you like our video, would you please help us like, share and subscribe our channel. Wish you happy to see our videos. Thank you very much.